Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 27th, and today we're going to take a look at this atmospheric river coming our way. We'll also take a look on into next week and the extended. We'll take a brief look around the rest of the country. Not much going on, really. So we're going to focus heavily on this atmospheric river headed towards the Pacific Northwest right now. The heavy rain is going to start up tonight and continue on in through tomorrow. This atmospheric river is really a boundary between the subtropical air to the south and the colder air to the north. You can see some lightning strikes here in the colder air to the northeast, cold air cumulus here. This atmospheric river has subtropical connections, actually tropical connections, all the way back towards Guam as of a couple days ago. So we're going to take a look at that in some great detail here. As you can see, this system clearing out a bit now, but there's not much of a break as this atmospheric river just bears down on us almost immediately after this system departs. Checking out the water vapor loop, this is the Pacific Ocean here. You see Alaska and the West Coast. Here's Asia and Japan over here. Putting this into motion here, you can see this subtropical tap, all, or actually tropical tap, all the way back towards Guam here across the Pacific, stretches all the way towards the Pacific Northwest here. And you can see as we go into tonight, this moisture plume really gets over us, and it's going to get very warm all the way up through the mountains. And the freezing level is going to be up over 7,000 feet during the peak of this event. So... It's a good thing the streams are fairly running fairly low. We had a pretty good break. We haven't had he heavy precipitation for a while now. So this atmospheric river is going to have some room to play with before it starts flooding us. So it shouldn't be too bad with this initial impacts. And then it looks like in the extended, we're probably going to go back into a more ridgy pattern. So hopefully we can get out of this atmospheric river without uh, too much extreme flooding. So here we're looking at the day two excessive rainfall outlook, and you can see slight risk for the Cascades and portions of the coastal areas of Washington, Oregon, marginal elsewhere down in the Oregon Cascades. And you have marginal into the Idaho higher elevations in the mountains as some of this atmospheric river is coming through the Columbia Basin and slamming into the higher terrain there. So it's the duration of this atmospheric river that is the problem, 48 plus hours, some areas getting 72 hours underneath atmospheric river conditions. So again, we didn't have a lot of precipitation in our last few weeks, so the river should be fairly low, so maybe we'll get out of the unscathed, but there are going to be some pretty high 24-hour totals th through areas of the Cascades and the Olympics, so we still need to have an eye up for those flooding concerns, and even some places, some urban areas could still get uh, some flooding, you know, with Seattle seeing maybe two and a half inches in a 24-hour period and places like Coquium getting close to three inches in a 24-hour period, for example. And even lesser amounts with snow on the ground can really cause some problems in areas like Spokane. So make sure those drains are clear. You know, if you need to shovel areas, don't let that water channel into your home or, you know, into your basement, for example. Now, another risk here, too, is we're going to have a lot of waterfall on top of our snowpack here. The freezing level is going to be up above 7,000 feet. And you can see there is considerable avalanche danger for west slopes of the Cascades and even the east slope central and high risk for west slopes north. Uh, treacherous avalanche conditions are going to be present uh, north Cascades there. So heads up there. This is the Northwest Avalanche Center. This is a great site. If you click on this, it gives all kinds of just very in very high detailed information here they even have uh, recent pictures of the terrain and threats to look for for avalanche danger so if you're in the, you go in the backcountry a lot you're doing any hiking or snowboarding backcountry skiing uh, check this site out northwest avalanche centered very good so checking out seattle look at this profile here you can see the freezing level 700 millibars about 10,000 feet so you can see it's up around 8,000 feet here or so maybe seven eight thousand feet as you see, this entire profile here is above freezing here. Here's the freezing line, zero degrees Celsius. And you can see we are pretty warm up into the lower 50s here for Seattle. And this is going to be pretty much the rule for most of the area here is this really warm atmospheric river is just barreling into the area. And you can see the winds here, mainly out of the southwest through the west as they go all off. But the entire column is saturated. And as we look here, you can see the winter weather advisories are active for the higher terrain, Cascades, and the winter storm warning still going for the Olympics. Still a wind advisory up north. They didn't get the really big winds up there, but they're getting gusts into the 40s. So heads up for that. And, and of course, if you're on the coast, watch out for those sneaker waves. And a little bit closer here, there's a hydraulic outlook just talking about potential for some flooding. But the risk isn't too high right now just because we haven't had that much rain lately. And here is Spokane talking about clear those drains. Watch out for increasing snow melt. Uh, you know, just, just have a heads up for your local areas. 
and around the rest of the country, you can see it's pretty quiet generally. There is a there's a high surf advisory out there for California. So if you want to have a little uh, a dream of the beach down there, you can take a visit down to Southern California if you want to get away from this atmospheric river up here. Now we're going into our precipitation totals we can expect. Here is the European model from last night. You can see those heavy totals impacting the Oregon, Washington coastal range and the central Cascades are really going to get hammered out of this too. And look at this by Tuesday morning, over three inches for Seattle and some really heavy totals there to the uh, Southwest Washington, higher terrain as well. This atmospheric river is pretty relentless. It's a good thing. We had a big break from some heavy precip for a while with this thing moving in. And you see, as we go into Wednesday morning, you can see some really good totals come through the Idaho panhandle into Eastern Washington in there. A lot of these areas are going to get over a half an inch of precipitation which is extremely beneficial. You can see Oregon still kind of left out of it, and that's where the really extreme drought lies. But still, this is going to be this is really good news for Eastern Washington here as we go on into early March. Checking out the snowfall totals, we can expect it still shows the really highest terrain might get some snowfall totals, but for the most part, uh, areas where people are accessing the terrain there, the snowfall is you know a lot of this is going to be falling as rain basically after this evening. Checking out Stampede Pass, you can see initially a lot of snow is going to pile up, you know, potentially over eight inches, and then it's going to turn to rain, a lot of rain falling into that. So there's going to be considerable avalanche danger, as we talked about. So heads up for that. The Stampede Pass gets pretty warm, as you see, as we go into Monday night here. You know, it looks like they're going to stay above freezing for uh, over 24 hours at least, maybe even longer on into Wednesday. Check out Spokane. It's going to get nice and warm coming up especially tuesday and you're going to stay above freezing at least until the end of the week uh eugene look at this probably going to get up towards 60 degrees in some areas down there in the southern willamette valley and here's pendleton look at this temperatures up towards 60 for pendleton oregon so you're going to have some snow melting along with precipitation coming through there not a lot in north northeast oregon i should point that out though but for portions of eastern Washington, you will be getting more precip with that snow melt. And Seattle, Tacoma, generally highs up into the 50s. So it's going to feel nice and warm. Look at some of these overnight lows up towards the upper 40s. You're not going to cool off near as much as we have been this past week. And down Brookings, Oregon, you're not getting that downslope flow. So you're going to be like the rest of us here, highs in the 50s. And look at these lows up around 50 degrees. And here's Bellingham, too, in the same boat. You guys get the idea with these temperatures. So here's Seattle, Tacoma. These are the ensemble members. You can see really good agreement for the heavy rain coming in here during the day Monday. The control run had over two and a half inches in a 24-hour period ending tomorrow night. So we'll see how that plays out. The mean is still over two inches, so a very rainy day coming up uh, on tonight on into Monday night for Seattle. Heavy rain at times. Uh this is Hoquiam. You can see the control almost had three inches. The mean is over two inches as well. This is out on the Washington coast, if you didn't know. And let's check out the winds coming here too. The NAM is painting a little bit windier um, scenario than the European or the HER, so I kind of have my doubts about it. But you can see the wind will die down during the day for the interior of western Washington up towards the San Juans and Bellingham. And then it kind of picks up again as we go on into tonight, into Tuesday morning, as those coastal winds pick up again here too. And we'll look at some of these speeds here. As you can see, some prolonged winds on the Oregon coast. We'll highlight, highlight that on the European here coming up too. And this is peak wind gusts. It's calling for some pretty hefty winds to the central sound here too. I think it's overdoing it here though. I think we're going to be more along the lines of mid to upper 30. So just a blustery day with some uh, it's very doubtful there's going to be power outages through the Puget Sound with this wind system. It goes through Monday, but there is always that chance for some nuisance power outages. But check out the Oregon coast. They're getting some pretty good gusts here up over 60 miles an hour are possible through Monday morning. And even out in eastern Washington, there's some pretty good, there's pretty high winds showing up there. So let's check out the European and the max gusts here and kind of compare it. You can see nothing like what the NAM is painting here. This is through Wednesday afternoon, and you see just the blustery conditions, the Puget Sound, and some stronger winds going into tomorrow for areas, uh, San Juans, and maybe up towards Bellingham again. But 
this is what the NAM is showing. This low, that low does not look very impressive. So I have my serious doubts about the NAM being right with these wind speeds. I think it's much more likely to be in line with the European model, but it does look like the Oregon coast is going to get a prolonged period of um, at least wind advisory level winds and potentially high winds at times. And we'll look at that again here in a minute. And checking out the system, you can see that low just coming in north of Vancouver Island and just, it's a weak low, so it just continues to steer this Pacific, uh, atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest. And you can see this precip just continues on as this trough has to make its way through here on Wednesday evening. And this atmospheric river continues all the way down the West Coast into Northern California even. So checking out that wind, I wanted to show you guys this. Decent winds just mainly offshore here, the Washington, Oregon coast. And as this next system moves through here that's steering the atmospheric river at us, you can see these big winds really pick up as we go into tonight and into Monday morning for the Oregon coast. And they kind of hang on there for a while. So some pretty good gusts. We'll take a look at Tillamook's uh, European ensemble runs for peak wind speeds here. As yeah, tonight the winds pick up back again over the northeast or the north interior there. And then you'll see that frontal system kind of make its way through. And then you'll see the trough as it just kind of meanders its way. And finally, after that trough gets in there, it'll cut off the precipitation for a lot of the areas of the Pacific Northwest. And here's the max wind gust for the Euro. You can see the big gust for the Oregon coast, not so much for the Washington coast there. And of course, the higher terrain heads up if you're up there. Here's Seattle Tacoma. This is probably much more accurate. You can see the mean is generally in the 30s, so it's going to be blustery at times. No big windstorm on the way for Seattle. Portland looks like it's the front passes here going on into tomorrow late morning and early afternoon. You might get some blustery winds up in the 40s here. Again, the mean is still in the 30s there, so not a big windstorm coming for Portland either. Tillamook, on the other hand, is going to get some pretty strong winds, and they're kind of prolonged here. It's kind of, It's ongoing now. They should be pretty gusty there on Til Tillamook, Oregon coast. And then you can see the really strong winds come in there late Monday morning with some of these, the ensemble means well over 50 miles per hour there. And some of them higher up towards 60 miles per hour. So there'll probably be at least a wind advisory out for portions of the Oregon coast going into Monday night. This is Bellingham. Does these gusts, I think they had a 45 mile per hour gust this morning, I believe. So this kind of, you know, this is showing that feature there, and then it's just generally blust, blustery thereafter. Now looking at the extended a little bit here, here's the European, actually this is last, this is the 06. Let's go, let's have this run way out here so we can see this is the, the trough that's sending this atmospheric river into our area here, and finally it moves through, and then you'll see it kind of settles over the Southwest USA, and then this huge ridge looks like it's gonna build back over us. It's yet to be seen just what kind of weather we'll get. Are we going to get really stagnant? And with precipitation that we got recently, is that going to cause fog concerns? Or are we going to get a little bit more of, you know, mixing and some stirring of the atmosphere? As later in the period, it kind of shows that trough getting close to us again. But still, the good model agreement here right now shows us ridging, rebuilding early into mid-March. Let's take a look at the surface map here too. You can see the system that's moving up on Monday. It's going to bring the strong winds to the Oregon coast and continue that atmospheric river for the Pacific Northwest as this, this low really fills. It continues to bring precip on through Wednesday. And then the big ridge builds over us here. You know, these aren't, these gradients aren't too tight or anything. So I worry about, there might be a little bit of flow breaking up the fog enough, but I don't like those stagnant foggy periods, so I'm, I'm always rooting against the fog. Maybe we'll get some nice days out of this ridge instead of a foggy pattern. But then you can see that weak trough move by. That's as well out to the extended, though, so take that with a grain of salt. And here is the GFS, the ensemble. Good agreement so far with that atmospheric river and then that dying system as it just kind of hangs over the Pacific Northwest for a day on Wednesday. And then we get that ridging building in there. So good model agreement with the ridging there. As we saw yesterday, there were some talk about going into a cooler pattern coming on into early or mid-March, but models have backed off that quite a bit. And this is getting way out into La La Land, but you can still see that general signal for some ridging out there. Here's the Canadian model. Here's the surface. 
pressure you can see the atmospheric river and the trough go through and then the ridging builds up so hopefully we get some nice days out of this into early march i mean if that if this lines up right it could be some nice spring, early spring weather meteorological spring does start on march 1st i know technically it doesn't start till what march 20th or 21st i forget which it is but yeah the strong signal for ridging on into mid-march is there on all the models as you can see the general troughing out over the hudson bay here and on into the east coast and then this is way off in La La Land here, so not reliable. But yeah, it's, we've got a big atmospheric river we have to go through. This precipitation is going to continue on through Wednesday for the area. So heads up for that. And we'll play this one more time here. You can just see the extent of this atmospheric river. It stretches all the way across the Pacific Ocean into the Pacific Northwest. And check that out. That's why they call it a Pineapple Express as well. You can see that moisture connection all the way from Hawaii all the way to the Pacific Northwest. So you might be able to smell some pina coladas if you go outside here on into tomorrow afternoon. So yeah, we get a little taste of a late winter atmospheric river here. And then we're going to go on to another ridge as we go into early March. So We'll take a look at this tomorrow and see what's transpiring as far as the atmospheric river. And we'll take another look at the extended two to see if the models are still green on the ridge. And I hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you guys later.